friends, so for today's read aloud, I will still be continuing doing our read alouds. Maybe not every day, but um, I just think it'd be uh, really fun and enjoyable for you at home to follow along. So we have been doing our sideways stories from um, Wayside School in our chapter books. Today, we're going to be focusing on making predictions. Now, I also know that you're learning about author's purpose, but I still want to focus a little bit more on making predictions. So our story today is called The Uncorker of Ocean Bottles. So it's definitely a, an interesting title for this book, The Uncorker of Ocean Bottles. I'm looking at the title, at the pictures, and at the back, we can find even more clues to what this book may be about. A letter can hold the treasure of a clam-hugged pearl. So I'm thinking he finds bottles in the ocean. Let's see what happens. All right. The uncorker of ocean bottles lived alone on a high spot with only one tree for shade. He always kept his eyes on the waves watchful for a glint of glass. He had a job of the utmost importance. It was his task to open any bottles found at sea and make sure they were delivered. So we're gonna put a pause on it real quick. Do you think that this is fiction, which means not real, or nonfiction, which means real? Now, these things so far can happen in real life. However, this is actually a realistic fiction, which means this could possibly happen in real life, but this is telling a story, which means it's a made up story, which means this is fiction. Sometimes to deliver a bottle, he needed only to scroll to the nearest village. Correction. He needed only to stroll to the nearest village. Other times he would journey until his compass became rusty and he felt loneliness as sharp as fish scales. Sometimes the messages were very old, crunchy, like leaves in the fall. Sometimes the messages were written by a quill dipped in sadness. But most of the time, they made people quite happy for a letter can hold the treasure of a clam-hugged pearl. So that was what we read on the back of our story, right? I'm putting a pause on it. Maybe something makes our uncorker of ocean bottles happy. Let's see what happens. While the uncorker of ocean bottles loved his job, he couldn't help but wonder if he would ever receive a letter. Truth be told, each time he opened a bottle, a part of him hoped to see his own name winking from the top of the page. But then he remembered that this was about as likely as finding a mermaid's toenail on the beach for he had no name, he had no friends, he stank of seaweed and salt and fishermen's feet. No one would ever write him a letter. So I'm going to put a pause on it and make one prediction now. The story is telling us that he's really hoping to receive a letter in an ocean bottle. I'm going to make a prediction that he does because the story is hinting or giving us clues that this is something that he really wants to happen to him. So I'm going to make a prediction and let's see if that comes true. But he still would have liked it just the same. One day the waves tipped their white postman hats to the uncorker and delivered a bottle with a very peculiar letter inside. I'm not sure you'll get this in time, but I'm having a party tomorrow evening tide at the seashore. Will you please come? A 
Oh dear, said the uncorker. He had no idea who the letter was for or where to deliver it. But the truth was, he was very curious. He'd never been invited to a party before, and he suspected he might like to go. So I'm going to make, put a pause on it and make another prediction. I predicted that because in the beginning of her story, it talked about him going um, high and low, far and near, um, to different places, that he would journey to find who the bottle belonged to. So I'm going to be making a prediction now to, and going to say that I think he's going to do the same thing to see who this bottle belongs to. Let's see if I'm correct. First, he visited the maker of cakes. Pardon, said the uncorker, but do you recognize this print? The cake maker studied the note. Don't recognize the script, he finally said, but oh, how I love a seaside dance. The uncorker moved on. He asked the candy shop owner. He asked a woman buying chocolate dipped treats. He asked a young girl in a green dress. Sorry, each one sighed, though I do wish I'd received an invitation to such a party. So we now know that he is traveling high and low to seek out the owner of this invitation or who the invitation belongs to. So my prediction came true. Now let's keep reading. The uncorker asked a seagull, a sailor, and a one-man band, but nobody could claim the letter. Nobody in the sky or sand or sea. We're going to put one more pause on it. What do you think at home? Who do you think that letter or invitation belongs to? I'm going to make a prediction. I think that letter was meant for him the uncorker of ocean bottles. I wonder if you made that same prediction. So let's read on to find out. The uncorker felt very low. This was the first time he'd been unable to deliver a message. As he fell asleep, that night, the uncorker decided to go to the seashore the next day. He would go and apologize to the writer of the note. So if you at home made that prediction that he would himself go to the location of the party, you were absolutely correct. The uncorker of ocean bottles arrived early, carrying a handful of his favorite seashells. He thought it might be rude to show up uninvited and empty-handed. The seashore was draped in seaweed and starfish. Candles floated in clam shells. There were sand sculptures and umbrellas. It's you, said the maker of cakes. How grand, said the candy shop owner. The other guests had arrived already, a woman, a girl in a green dress, a seagull, a sailor, and a one-man band. So if you even made the prediction that all those people that he met along the way, he'd meet at the party, you were correct again. When the girl in green asked the uncorker of ocean bottles to dance, he said, I'm not sure I know how, but I'd like to just the same. As they spun across the beach to the water's edge and back again, everyone smiled and kept the beat. The uncorker's heart was a glass vessel filled to the brim. As the stars began to arrive, and the moon as well, the uncorker took out the bottle he had been unable to deliver. Perhaps, he said, his mouth full of cake, yes, perhaps I shall try to deliver this again 
tomorrow. All right. So I really enjoyed reading that book. There were lots of fun, cool predictions we made along the way. Go ahead and kiss your brains. Signing off.